Hello, hello. This is Grammar Nations again. You might have seen me in the morning. I was uh, one of the guests of the Dojo's channel. Uh, they're running uh, their 40-hour stream, and uh, yeah, I had the pleasure to do a commentary of uh, one of the rounds games, and. Uh, yeah so here we are here we are and uh, I, I decided it's time to do my own boot camp and it's already 29th edition so what's a Queen's Indian that's very simple so the Queen's Indian is one of the most popular openings for black so after d4 knight f6 c4 e6 Normally, white plays knight of three and b6. Just a second. I think I think I'm gonna play a cat's gambit. There's a cat in the background. Just a second. The cat is gone. All right. So. Uh, reverse. No, it's not reverse kings. You know that's that's queens Indian, queens Indian. One of the most popular openings. The cat is gone. I threw him out. No, no, he doesn't deserve it. He's always there. He's always there when you don't need him. Anyway, uh, so I wanted to do a quick bootcamp about how to properly play this and what might be the traditional ideas here for black so this is going to be from black's perspective all right all right let's let's start with something um yeah so let's start with the black's perspective so d4 knight of six uh c4 e6 so this is how they usually play it uh, knight c3 this is what I already covered in my Nimzo Indian bootcamp. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember the number of the bootcamp, but, but I had it. I had a Nimzo Indian already. So you sh should have at least some kind of uh, uh, understanding how to meet this. And uh, Queen's Indian is everything pretty much Knight of Three. Yeah, knight f3, of course, uh, there's uh, the possibility to play d5, uh, still switch to various other openings like the Slav, or maybe Queen's Gambit accepted, declined, etc. But there is also the b6 move, and b6 is what marks Queen's Indian. If you would ask me how historically it has evolved, I, I don't think I really know that, but it's not really relevant. So the idea is this, normally the bishop goes to b7, sometimes the bishop goes to a6 to cause some problems for the white pawn on c4. And uh, if white plays knight c3, then I guess we just switch to the nimzo. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, knight c3 is okay, you just play bishop b4, bishop b7 and then ex execute one of the nimzo Indian ideas. And uh, so we're going to check what happens if white doesn't. So white might play g3. So let's start with this one. Um, I think pretty much, uh, pretty much anyone who is playing the Queen's Indian, he has to try both systems. So the first system, the the standard system, which doesn't require you quite a lot of knowledge, is played like this: Bishop b7. And uh, normally the idea is this, as soon, as soon as white plays knight c3, if you already have moved your dark square bishop, you play knight e4. That's automatic. Let me show you one idea. So for example, bishop b7, bishop g2. Let's try this bishop e7. I don't play it right now. I'm playing slightly a different line. So bishop e7. Uh, for example here, if white would play knight c3, then we play knight e4, because now bishop d4 would be a waste of time. You already played bishop e7, so why do you want to waste your time? 
So we will play knight e4 right away. So short castle, yeah, let, let me start with the normal basics. Short castle, short castle. And now the question is, how is white going to proceed? Because your next move, if white allows this, you want to play c5. Or d5, it pretty much doesn't matter. So for example, if white would play something like very slow, b3. Yeah, I've seen people play like this. So, yeah, I mean, d5 is perfectly fine, but now you can already play c5. And about this position, one of the core ideas for white is always meet c5, d5, if he's, if he's playing for the advantage. So, he normally plays d5. e takes and knight h4. But because of this weird move b3, which doesn't really contribute anything. This, I, I don't really know this line, but I think it doesn't make any sense. So I would play something like, I, I guess knight e4, with the idea to play bishop f6. So yeah, what is this, right? Uh, something like c takes, bishop f6, doesn't look like, it doesn't look like white can really do this. So that's the idea. That is the idea why white is playing knight c3 here. And it is possible for black still to play c5, but you have to understand the consequences. So the consequences are that black uh, black allows white to play d5, e takes, and already it's possible to pay, play c takes. And this, yeah, b3 is a waste of time. And this already is a slightly cramped position. Somebody who is a great fan of the... Uh, the Benoni, the modern Benoni setups, you feel very good there, sure, you can try to play this, but it's not good, it's just not good. So for example, something like d6, uh, yeah, I don't know really, something like e4, a6, a4, uh, knight e7, rook e8, bishop f8, g6, bishop g7, this is gonna take you even a couple of tempos until you reach some kind of a Benoni structure. And White is just gonna play knight e2, knight c4 and pressure these pawns on d6 and, and b6 in earnest. So that's not good. And this, this is essentially gonna be uh, one of the core ideas because White is interested to play d5. So that's his idea. If White would have the move here, he would play d5 and knight e4. And that is considered to be the most dangerous Continuation. So with the knight on c3, black normally plays knight e4. And it's very, very important where stands the white queen. Because you need to be careful of some ideas like either knight e2 or knight e5. And look at this. Now this is a pin. But since the white queen is under attack, now you safely take it. Takes... Bishop takes, king takes, and whatever. I mean, play something simple. I imagine f5, bishop f6, d6, queen d7, knight c6 is just pretty good. Maybe there's even something else, something like d5. Yeah, I cannot imagine really white having anything here. d5, queen d7, knight c6, uh, you're extremely solid. Sack the queen? No, I think it's too much. You mean bishop b7? No, 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 no. That that's too much. That's too much. So that's that's the core idea again. So it really depends where the white queen stands, but it normally stands on d1. So let me show you again some lines. So knight c3, knight e4, and uh, people have already accepted this as sort of drawish line. Yeah, so not very ambitious players with white or white that just doesn't know it. They go to this line and the position is just equal. Yeah, so queen c2 is uh, the most popular move here. I mean, of course, it's not the strongest, but it's the most popular move. Knight x on c3. Now, here's a very important moment. There is knight g5. And knight g5 would be a terrible move. For you to meet because he is threatening you to mate and he is threatening your bishop to be taken but this is why you are always extremely careful not to miss this and you have an intermezzo check 
Night takes on e2. So king h1, you are just in time to take on g2. Hey, Newport Nomad, appreciate for your sub. Thank you, thank you. I hope you appreciate the content. So queen e2, bishop takes on g2, white is losing a lot of material. So that's not good. Um, instead of this, white could play something like queen takes on c3. Uh, queen takes on c3 is not really an ambitious move. Um, the simplest how you can continue, I guess, is now you can play c5. You want to take on d4. You want to eliminate white's center. So now d5. Now this doesn't look very good because e takes, let's say some knight retreat. I don't know where. There's always the d4 move. So we are using the tempo attack the queen. So instead of this, white could play something like, yeah, it's difficult to tell, something like bishop before, and you could just take it. Oh, thank you, thank you, Nomad, appreciate that. C takes, 94 takes, takes, and yeah, I don't know, I mean, something like, I think d5 already should be good. Yeah, the engine doesn't like it for some reason. Yeah, maybe bishop f6, knight c6, develop the pieces. Of course, you still need you still need to be careful. Yeah, you, you need to be careful not to miss things. Um, and uh, so queen c2, knight c3, queen c3, c5 is okay. It's not bad. But you're going to be fighting for equality. Now, about these positions, what I really like is that you can play f5 and now f5 is a much more interesting move and if you would ask the engine engine doesn't like it well i do uh, because this position really resembles to the dutch defense and i'm a big dutch defense fan so the idea is to play bishop f6 d6 and depending where the pieces go something like queen e7 97 maybe even g6 bishop g7 knight f6 a knight e4. Now you're looking for some kind of uh, um, attack in the center. And I think I had one game like this. Uh, one game continued with something like... Uh, I think it was d5. That was rather interesting. Uh, d5 with the idea that white is sacrificing the pawn. And then continues, I think... Yeah, now I think it's knight e1. And now this pin is quite annoying. But I think I played in the... Oh, wait, I think I mixed up. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember. Was it Bishop before? Just a second. I could, I could find the game for you. Uh, let me... Uh, let me check it. Okay, I, I cannot find it. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I just, I just remember from my memory. So this is one of the ideas that you should be always be careful. D5, knight e4, and white is pressing for some space advantage. So yeah, so d5, I imagine now you play bishop f6, queen c2, and something like knight a6. Feels pretty solid, bishop f4. And there was this one idea, one very interesting idea to play here, d6. And if white takes, now I, I don't remember, was it bishop e4 immediately or knight c5? Yeah, maybe knight c5 right away. You just recapture this pawn later. And this is where, uh, this is where so many people get trapped. I mean, they don't understand this. They don't understand that you're supposed to allow black to play e5 and then play some kind of a king's indian position where black already has um stopped white's intentions at the queen side so pretty much everybody takes on e6 as far as i've noticed oh but this is already quite an advanced play so again let, let's go back to this uh, old setup um yeah so knight c3 knight e4 um about this position if we would be given an opportunity um black has uh, black has number of ways how to continue from here i mean you can play 
f5 and a bishop f6. You can play actively in the center with d5, and sometimes the bishop goes to f6. Oh, I don't think I kept. I don't think I kept PG and files to share for you. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm showing everything from memory. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, you're uh, referring to St. Louis Chess Club's director, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll keep this in my, in my, in my mind as an idea. Uh, so uh, yeah, knight c3 again. Knight c3, knight e4, queen c2, knight c3. I'll just like to show you one trick. White might take with a b-pawn. And this is a very critical moment because you need to understand what white is threatening. So the threat number one. White wants to play knight g5. Threat number two. White wants to get the strong pawn center. And these are going to be the two key ideas. I mean, okay, we can try to add the third idea of d5 and knight e4. So if you know these, you're never going to be surprised. So the first two ideas, they're easy to parry. For example, you could play f5. And there is no knight g5 anymore. There is no e4 anymore. So your idea again is to play a bishop f6, d6. Uh, I don't know what to do about this knight. Maybe on c6, maybe on d7. There are various possibilities. And I've, I've had some games like this. White has still tried to play d5. And again, now you play bishop. Oh wait, it was a bishop, sorry. It was knight a6. The knight is getting to c5. Knight e4, knight c5, and now about this knight on c5, it's protecting the bishop on b7. Should the position somehow open? I don't think I mentioned here. White has a very strong threat to play b6. Easy to miss. So if you don't know this idea, yet another reason why white is positioning the pawn on d5 and knight d4, there might be some ideas to push d6 and try to win a piece. Because bishop g2, there will be intermezzo move, d takes on e7, and white wins a piece. But with the knight c5 move, not only black develops the piece, it protects the bishop. It protects the pawn on e6. About the uh, pawn on e6, there are some lines where black is voluntarily sacrificing the pawn on e6, and he is regaining it later. For example, uh, it's not going to be here, I just want to show you the idea. For example, here, takes, takes, and of course I can take it. But sometimes there is this moment to walk past it and then collect the pawn, because your opponent is not going to be in time to protect it. Yeah, probably I'll need to find the example and show it to you so that you understand what I'm talking about here. Of course, you should just take the pawn. So again, knight c3, knight e4, queen c2, knight c3. Normally everybody takes with a queen and I believe c5 is equal. Uh, d5 is okay, but about d5 positions, I'm going to talk uh, slightly later. I think it's you have to be very careful about d5s. Um, yeah, the other alternative is play f5, bishop f6. If you, if you take pawn, your knight falls. Uh, which, which, which pawn are you talking to, Newport? Nomad? Uh, so, here obviously White has a number of ideas. How is he trying to continue? For example, there's a very popular move. Bishop d2. Very popular. Uh, there was no arena today. I was uh, doing a stream for the dojos. They have a uh, 40 hours, 48 hour stream. But I just didn't want to, uh, my own stream to pass by, so... <laughs> Right, so bishop d2 is a tricky move, and here black has a number of moves, again, the last knight move. Uh, 
No, uh, I'm not sure I understood about which moment you're referring to, but I think you're referring to this moment, knight e4, queen c2, knight c3, b takes, here, 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 takes, 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 everything is protected, everything is protected, the knight is protecting the uh, e6 square, if I understand it correctly, your concern. And the queen can always be positioned somewhere on, on c8, the bishop goes to f6, uh, should be should be pretty pretty normal, if, if this is the issue you were talking to. Uh, so instead of this, white plays bishop d2, developing the piece, and again, inviting black to take on d2. And now you have to understand what happens if you do. So knight e2 is probably just fine. But the question is, what are you going to do a bit about e4? Now that is a big positional threat. So if you're going to play something like a 5, white is going to charge forward with d5. Now something like knight a6, knight e4, again the threat appears. At this point on e6 is not even relevant, to be honest. That's something like... Uh, I'm not sure, can I even... The engine says e5 is playable. Yeah, I don't know. Knight c2. Yeah, maybe this is playable still. But for me, normally the, uh, the approach is... Uh, where the knight was protecting... I'm so, I'm sorry I lost I lost a uh, position already. Can we return to that later? I'll check it. Um, maybe you can whisper to me and then and uh, I'll check it out. Okay. Uh, so I think about this position. I don't want to rush taking the knight or the bishop. Uh, one of the tricky ideas, one of the tricky uh, maneuvers you should be aware of. Not here, but there is a possibility. You can always take the knight. And again, now you see the two ideas that your opponent is threatening. He is threatening to play both d5, knight, d4. He is threatening to play, I don't know, queen c2 or queen d3 and push e4. And now there is this move. And this bishop e4 is a very traditional idea. How... Um, how... Uh, normally black is solving opening problems so why can't really grab the center and if you know this maneuver it's gonna help you a lot so why could play something like um yeah still d5 i guess and after bishop f6 yeah the engine again doesn't like it i guess i slightly rushed it uh black should be sort of Sort of fine, yeah, but this is not the most accurate continuation. I just want to show you the idea. But if white would play 92, driving away the bishop, now you can take and push d5, and that's it. Now you should be pretty feeling pretty solid. Maybe c5, maybe c6, uh, position the knight on d7 and f6, and pretty solid position. However, if white plays bishop d2. I want to play bishop f6. I like this move. Uh, the bishop f6, you immediately are pressuring the center. You're still inviting white to take on e4, and now you have this bishop on e4, uh, just because white was willing to spend the tempo. And then you want to play something like d6, knight e7, g6, bishop g7, and seek some ways to organize uh, some activity in the center. So what normally white does, it plays either rook c1, so bishop f6, rook c1. You can still, you can still postpone the decision to take it. Queen c2, about this position, it's quite tricky. It's quite tricky. Um, queen c2, again, you have to understand what white is aiming for. White is inviting you now to take on c3, bishop c3, and white is going to push e4. So I think if you have no choice, 
and your opponent is about to take the control of the center e4, d4, c4, take the bishop. So because the position maybe it will inevitably open, you will have two bishops. So white has wasted a tempo for queen c2, queen d2. Now I think the simplest way how you can continue is knight e7, e4, and something like, I think it's g6, yeah, g6 should be pretty good. Rook e1, bishop g7, queen e7, and something like c5, a6, c5, try to open this position, or maybe on some occasions play a king's in in position with e5, d5, f5. Uh, the engines, they don't really love this position, but they never love any king's in positions. Uh, black is very easy setup. So I would say this is some sort of um, an improved version of the, uh, the hippopotamus. So the knight on e7 has traded white's dark square bishop, and it's slightly cramped, but with a lot of opportunities how you can try to act with your pieces. So again, how did that happen? Knight of 3, b6, g3, bishop b7. Now we play bishop e7. If white plays knight c3, nothing changes immediately. Knight e4. Now, some players like to trick their opponents like this. Because if you will miss it, this is what will happen. You'll play short castle. Your opponent will play... I don't know what is the best here. Queen d3, I guess. Queen d3. Now, he is threatened to play e4. And c5 is still d5. Yeah, about the uh, d5. About the d5. I'll mention this. But it's my personal opinion. I, I suggest to avoid it. Uh, you're going to see why. It's it's okay. It's okay. I mean, d5 is perfectly playable. Move. d5, c takes, c takes. Should be fine. Should be fine. But personally, I, I'm not so sure if I like it. So I try to avoid it. So let's say again. Short castle. Short castle. Knight c3. Knight e4. White plays bishop d2, the best move. Bishop f6. And now there's this tricky move. Bishop e1. Yeah, this was this was a bomb, something like um, um, three years ago, something like that. Very popular move. And uh, the idea was White wants to play queen c2, force the knight trade, and recapture with a bishop and get a strong center. Uh, d5, yeah, that's the Pologievsky's variation. I'll show you. I'll show you. But for that, I think I'm going to need to find some old files. Um, some very old files I might have, them, might have them about d5. Yeah, white can play d5. Uh, so about uh, this one. So bishop d2, bishop f6, bishop e1. No, I think the best here is you just take it. And do you remember now the maneuver? <clears throat> Queen's Indian is all about understanding the ideas. So this is what I like it. There is not really... I mean, there's obviously big theory, but um, you can very often just get an easy playable position if you understand the core ideas. So now you play bishop e4. The Dutch, yeah. yeah. It, it has some similarity with the Dutch. And I play a lot of Dutch myself. So this, uh, this continuation for me was um, very easy a line. I, I thought I can pursue. About this position, again, if the knight goes away, and pretty much everybody plays like this. So something like knight e1 or knight h4. Let's say knight, knight e1. 
takes, takes, and here d5 is fine. This is fine. So let's say d5, c takes, queen takes, knight f3, and whatever. I mean, it's already so equal position. Uh, maybe not c5 right away, maybe rook d8, maybe knight e7. Find the right time to play c5, and the position is just equal. Normally, an ambitious player, um, ambitious players know this, they try to remove the bishop from g2. And this is how it usually happens. They play something like rook e1. With the idea to play bishop f1. With the idea to play knight f1. Uh, I'm sorry, knight e2. f3 and e4. If your opponent does this, this means you have a lot of improvisation available to you. I think you can still continue to play something simple. Something like d6. Let's say bishop f1. Knight d7. Knight d2. Bishop b7. e4. And not e5, but c5. So, uh, this feels okay. This feels okay. But again, you would have to have some knowledge about hedgehog positions, because you want to take on d4. Let's say knight f3. c takes on d4. Knight d4. And something like a6. Looks like a great hedgehog position, which, again, I have played in the past. So, again, for me, this is quite easy. If I get a familiar position from a different opening, I already know the ideas. But, of course, you don't have to rush c dx on d4. Double the pawns. On f3, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, there are some ideas when you can take it. But about this position, I, I think this is going to be risky for you. And you want to play something like c6, d5, g6, bishop g7, and reroute the knight here. But you're going to be suffering. So I don't think this is a great idea. It is possible. I've seen people do this. So that is one of the one of the most interesting ideas what white, I'm sorry, what black can try to employ. So again, as soon, as soon as white plays knight c3, you're playing knight e4. As soon as white plays queen c2, hey, gf5 hungry, you have to understand, now white is threatening with knight d2. There is no more attack of the queen. f5 would be a big mistake. f5, knight e5, you're going to be suffering here. You can take on c3. There's going to be bishop b7. That's a big mistake. Now, knight e6 is a very sad move already. I don't know what you have to do here. Maybe d5. It's an ugly position already. So if the white queen attacks, you are taking on c3 and you have to be ready. What happens to knight g5? Here is no knight g5 again, but this cannot be a surprise to you. And again, queen takes on c3. C5 normally is considered to be the best move. F5 probably is also good. D5, somebody might like it as well. There's so many ways how you can continue, but you don't allow white freely take the center with the three pawns if he has two bishops. All right. So let's say we have this position and your opponent is very smart, or at least he thinks he is. And he tries to play queen c2. You should already understand what does he want. So here bishop e4 looks very interesting. Because this is one of the core ideas. Yeah, yeah, it looks interesting. I don't argue. But the question is, what are you going to do after queen b3 and knight, knight c3? And then the white queen goes back. Knight e4 is not good. 
because after 94, I don't know what's the best, 92, uh, 95, you have a problem with the pin. Uh, what? Mm, about the bishop g5? Not really. Hey, Kiki, by the way, yeah. Not really. No, 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 no. Not really there. But you have to understand, the queen, the white queen, is gone from the d-file. Remember, I told you. Maybe I didn't explain in detail. I told you one idea about c5. Maybe I should have started with this line. So, for example, here, knight c3, c5. No, I think I showed you this line. d5, this is worse. You don't want to play this. So, it's very easy, Benoni, great Benoni structure for white. And now you already know this. Your opponent has played queen c2. Do you see the difference? So he is no longer controlling the d5 square. Yeah, now you play c5. That's it. That's it. c5. Because he has no d5. So d5 takes knight h4 is a critical idea. But he doesn't have three attackers because the queen is gone. Now you can play whatever you want. I mean, something like knight c6. C takes, knight b4. Looks great. And you're just winning a pawn. Or no compensation. So that's why after queen c2, c5 is the most energetic continuation. About d takes on c5. Uh, this position, it can arise if white would play b3 as well. I think it's the most challenging to take with a pawn. Knight c3, knight c6, and you want to play pieces like this, but I don't recommend playing d5. About d5, for example, your opponent would play something like, let's say something like rook d1, and let's say you're thinking that, oh, now I can fight for the pawn center. Yeah, let's say d5, yeah, d5, c takes, e takes. This is a very risky approach. You are going to be suffering. And I don't see how ever you are going to enjoy those hanging pawns. So, For example, something like bishop g5. How do you pr protect them? I mean, it's easy. It's so easy for white to target them. Knight h4, knight f5. You just created yourself some weaknesses in the center that you are not maybe even capable to defend. But you know... Many people play like that. They like to push pawns by two squares in the center just because they can. Well, I have news for you. You don't have to do that. So, in this position, um, b dex is okay. Knight c6 is okay. Let's say rook d1. I think d6 is okay. It's okay. I mean, it's it feels a lot safer. So the pawn on d6 is much easier to defend. Maybe there was queen b6 already immediately. It doesn't really matter. Bishop f4 and um, I guess something like queen b8. Queen b8, rook d8, a6. And the typical idea, the most typical mistake, I think it's a typical positional mistake, why it pushes forward the e-pawn. Because everybody likes to do it. Everybody, everybody likes to push forward the pawns at the center by two squares. Now this seriously weakens uh, the d4 square. To be honest, I don't really know what's the best continuation here. I think even knight e4 is possible. Yeah, knight e4 takes, takes, e5 is to follow. Now this is a disaster. This is a disaster for white. Because you already gained a uh, protected pass pawn. And easy game at the queen side. If this doesn't happen, let's say your opponent plays whatever. Uh, I don't know. Something like rook c1, rook d8, b3, a6. I have a feeling that at some moment he's simply going to run out of moves. Because you have so many great moves here to make. Queen c7, rook c8. You can even improve the queen. So, uh, maybe, just maybe. At the right time, you'll play your d5, but not right away. 
Uh, your opponent will be struggling about what's what's my plan here? Should I play e4? What should I do here? a3, b4, no. e4, no. So what I'm supposed to do here? Uh, this is a very harmless position. As long as you are not blundering any pawns on c5 after knight a4, queen c7, knight c5. There might be some moment when you can play e5, knight e4 as well. About e5, I would be... I would be cautious. Yeah, I would be cautious because it weakens the d5 square, it weakens the f5 square, it makes my ducks or bishop pretty bad. There might be a moment when e5, knight e4 works just great. So this is for you to decide. So again, how did that happen? By the way, the same applies for b3, c5 as well. I'm sorry. Yeah, b3, c5. D takes. I don't like. That's my opinion. I don't like bishop c5. Because this will lead to a very symmetrical position where you will be struggling for a draw. So let's say bishop b2. Um, whatever, d5. C takes. Knight e5. Knight e2. This is a lovely position for white. Very easy to play, something like a3, rook c1, queen c2, queen b1, e4, you name it. I mean, there's so many great plans. It doesn't really matter that the position is symmetrical. You don't have active counter chances. And the bishop on c5, it's it's not, the, not even doing anything. So that's why structure-wise, I really like b takes on c5 with the idea just to develop the pieces and then seek some active ways how you can play in the center maybe d5 if prepared maybe e5 knight e4 and wait for your opponent to play e4 himself um all right so about knight c3 i think i already slightly explained to you what's the idea you want to play knight e4 of course, watch out at every given moment that your opponent might play knight e2, your opponent might play queen c2, knight g5, uh, your opponent might, I don't know, maybe even play something like knight b5 to try to capture you on this pin. Just be ready for this. So after bishop d2, you can already take it. Yeah, you can already take on d2 and then just play a normal position. But I think bishop f6, uh, if bishop e1 takes takes bishop e4 should be fine and if your opponent is ready to waste a lot of tempos with rook c1 d6 queen c2 now you just take it okay that's fine and knight e7 e4 and what was it i think it was c5 try to open the bishop so your dream position is try to get i'm not sure if it works here i think it should work it should work. C takes. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't. I wanted to play A6. Yeah, but there's E5. I wanted to set up a perfect Hedgecock position, but there's E5. Yeah, so this doesn't work. Because your bishop on B7 is under attack by the bishop on G2. And if you take on G2, white is going to take on F6. With the worst position. Yeah, so this maybe doesn't really work. So you need to be slightly more careful. Take with a pawn. Boom. Boom. Yeah, I guess bishop c3. And check it out. Suddenly you are simply better. Of course, I mean white made a mistake. But it's very easy. Very easy to misplay this position. I think actually this uh, this approach of c5 it's one of the most under evaluated ideas because everybody literally everybody likes to play e5 yeah because people relate to the king's indian positions that you have to actively strike in the center and after d5 g6 bishop g7 f5 yeah of course all of that is still playable but I think if you have the opportunity try not to close the bishop, try to activate it. It makes perfect sense. So let's say if white plays d5, 
Now you can include the trade. I know you close the position. At least. I mean, you can consider this. You have traded your bad bishop. Now you close the position. And then you just play g6 and 5. So for white, it's very difficult to organize something real at the queen side because you already have the pawn on c5. a3, b4. So, so where is your big idea? Engines, again, really appreciate this position from the white's perspective, uh, mainly because of the reason that white is enjoying some space advantage. All right, let's go back. About the uh, d5. Oh, wait, I, I would like to mention one little thing. One little thing. Your opponent can be tricky. The smarter is your opponent, the more trickier he is, and he can try to change the order of the moves. So an experienced player might play something like this. Knight c3, knight e4, and bishop d2. So you already need to be careful. Do you see this idea? Short castle, queen c2, knight c3. Oh, wait, I think I mixed up. Was there knight g5? Okay, there was no knight g5. Okay. Yeah, bishop c3. I think I mixed up. I was, <laughs> I was showing from my memory. I was trying to recreate a line where 9g5 actually is a threat just because your opponent has not castled yet. Yeah, I'm streaming again. Hyper Gamer, how are you? So I think if your opponent tries to do something like this, it's just the safest, take the bishop on d2. Knight g5 is not good. You just take on g5. So queen d2, and here you have a lot of freedom what to do. So again, I imagine something like f5. I like the, this move. Since I'm a Dutch defense player, I like this move. So f5, bishop f6, Something like rook d1. Yeah, again, engine is laughing at me. Maybe knight a6, occasionally the knight is positioned here. And just try to organize something at the center. Yeah, but the, the most active... No, I mean the most precise continuation here probably is something like... No, no, that's actually a very good question. Maybe, maybe you can even allow your opponent to play e4. Let's say something like bishop f6, short castle, d6, e4, and again, go to the same ideas with knight e7, g6, bishop g7, queen e7, and play c5. So I think this is not really a very harmless uh, setup uh, of the hippopotamus you can try to reach. All right, let me touch slightly on one of the most feared continuations at White's disposal, which is d5. Oh, wait, sorry, <laughs> not here. Short castle, short castle, and d5. Uh, this, I think this was Pologayevsky's system, which he popularized a long, long time ago. I'll try to try to find a file for that. Uh, just a second. Um, okay, here we go. What? Why well, it's not? Just a second. Just a second, just a second. Uh, 
uh, for some reason it's not loading ah. okay let me try it again All right. Um, okay, seems to be working. Uh, so, yeah, this is the current position. <laughs> Thank you. So, d5, what is the idea of the last move? d5. Uh, why is playing either knight d4 or knight h4? And uh, since your opponent is offering you to play a gambit, you have to accept it. Otherwise, what is your alternative here? You could play something like knight a6 to continue development, but your opponent has reached the perfect setup. He has managed to imprison your bishop on b7, he's gonna play knight e4, he's gonna play e4. So you don't want this to allow to happen. Instead of this, if this happens, you have to take. If white would capture with the pawn, obviously you're going to take with the bishop, not create a pin. So knight h4. Um, about this position, let me try to remember. Actually, here black has a choice. So the choice number one, you can try to complicate the game with knight e4. You are threatening to take the pawn on c4. You are threatening to take the knight on h4. <laughs> yes, yes, good luck, good luck, hyper gamer. So c takes on d5, bishop h4, here, bishop f6, here, and this position is probably slightly worse. But I imagine for some accelerated time control games should be pretty fine. If you manage to play something like knight c5, a5, d6, cannot imagine it be so bad. But that's not the best. Uh, it's an interesting alternative, but the best move here is c6. C takes, and now you just take with a knight. Uh, my boot camp is, um, yeah. I, at the moment, I don't have a fixed date because I'm trying to adjust my schedule every single week. Uh, lately, it's something like once every two weeks. And normally, either on Fridays, but most typically on Sundays. Yeah, So most typically, I organize on Sundays when people have uh, free time. Uh, yeah, but not, on, not, not, not during the middle of the working week. So Fridays or Sundays. Right, so taking with the knight on d5, this leads to a very interesting line where black has the extra pawn, but white has some sort of activity. And you need to be quite careful here. Now, there's obviously a big theory. Um, I think I think bishop f6 is slightly more interesting. With the idea to meet knight e6 with bishop a6. Here. And you are trying to get all of your pieces out. Continuing with c5. Knight c6. And suddenly black has a very good game. Yeah, obviously white made a mistake before, but for some reason it's lagging. I don't know why. So 
So that's the ambitious choice to play uh, to play for more. Bishop f6. Uh, there is also a move rook e1. Still the bishop goes to a6. You're selling the pawn back on d5. Knight still goes to e7. Uh, the knight on d6, yet again, you want to trade it. You want to bring out your remaining pieces with c5, knight c6. Yeah, but still, still, white is attacking. So white is attacking. You need to precisely know what you're doing here. Uh, this is why this line used to be very, very popular a long, long time ago. Let me just go back, try to revisit the standard line. After e takes, c6, take with the knight. I think knight c7 probably is the simplest. But bishop f6 is the more adventurous one. So you want to play d5. e4. Knight c3, here. Um, yeah, now I try to remember. I think it was... I think it was more interesting to take with the pawn. Bishop f4, knight a6, here. White has some sort of a temporal activity, but black should be holding. Uh, normally at the popular level this uh, entire line of uh, d5 is considered to be relatively harmless, but there is obviously some poison involved, so you need to be careful about this. Not sure if I can, not sure if I can <laughs> explain everything here in one bootcamp and uh, immediately refute the entire d5 system. I think it's a very interesting system that White sacrificed the pawn. Uh, recently, I think I saw some games by Daniil Dubov. He was playing knight e4 instead of knight h4. Uh, the top players, uh, they are not playing Queen's Indian anymore, I guess because it's considered to be slightly worse at their level. I think so. I think so. Now they're playing something else. They're playing the Queen's Gambit decline setups and aggressively playing for the center. That's why, uh, that's why, for example, um, King's Indian is pretty much extinct at the highest level. They cannot afford to do this, but it's the elite. It's the world elite, right? Everybody else, us mortals, I think we can still play it. Uh, what because of rookie one captain flag not sure i understood your question either way this is a very tricky line so i leave it up to you you know i think i think if you are playing i think if you are playing um an accelerated time control it's all about who controls the initiative so for example you're playing a blitz game uh, your opponent knows the theory well, and he plays d5. I think it might be a dangerous. Yeah, rookie one. I'll I'll uh, I'll show you. I'll show you rookie one line. I think so. I'll, I'll try to remember it. <laughs> Hope I won't forget it. Um, yeah. So, if you're playing an accelerated time control game, maybe you can just play the simple one, the simple system, knight e4. Knight e4, what was it? C takes, bishop h4 here, bishop f6, d6, a5, knight a6, knight c5. Should be easy. Again, if you have a lot of time on your clock, you can understand all the nuances, find the precise moves, find the cold moves, where the temporary initiative is not really that important, just go ahead and take the pawn. So, again, the critical line was... Uh, so the critical one was takes, knight h4, um, c6, takes, take with the knight, and knight c7. And you just push d5. 
I usually just push d5. So e4, d5, e takes. Uh, if you find it simpler, you can take with the knight as well. But I, th I think c takes is considered to be better. Because I don't like taking with the knight. Because after knight c3, knight e5, I have a feeling that it's a very one-sided game where white simply recaptures this uh, pawn on d5 has a very powerful knight on d5 not not very good but if somebody likes it go ahead but all you need to know is this sequence obviously the theory is longer than that play d5 let's say knight c3 and bring the bishop to f6 and capture yeah, whatever whatever you think is best, but uh, taking with the knight, maybe somebody is going to find slightly more peaceful. So let's say bishop f4, uh, yeah, knight c6. Here, here, and black is holding. Yeah, but this knight on d6 is quite an annoying one. So I think maybe because of this or... The other continuation, this line is considered to be harmless, but still, I think for some accelerated time control games, still fun line. About the uh, rookie one. Why is my computer lagging? I don't understand it. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. Ah. So it was, uh, just a sec, I think I'll just start it from scratch. All right, so d4, here, here, here. Ah, rookie one. Uh, rookie one is quite a tricky move. Uh, so, but the idea is um, multi-purpose. Normally, white is preparing to play e4. The move which I started to like, I was employing it for quite a time. This was Queen C8. Not sure if you're gonna appreciate that. I think quite a popular line here is, if I remember, Knight A6 as well. Knight A6 with the idea to push either D5 or C5. So, what I started to like was this tricky move, queen c8, protecting the bishop, and again preparing knight e4. And normally what white would be continuing here... Hello, Mr. Norwegian. Bishop g5, bishop f6, and take the center. But again, I, I think this is a really uh, great... Um, uh, the hippopotamus position where you have managed to trade one of your knights for your opponent's dark square bishop. So I, I don't see what, what's really bad about this one. So let's say knight c3, knight e7, g6, bishop g7. Let's say let, I'm going to make, make some normal moves. Let's say maybe instead of knight e7, I'm going to play g6. And here. So your opponent could be playing something like this. Knight e7. And again you're preparing to play a6. Maybe c5. Maybe e5. Let's say b3. a6. So imagine at some moment he's going to have to push d5. And now either you switch to the king's in and position. And play f5. An easy game at the king's side. Or consider including a trade and play e5. And then ideally organize some activity 
at the king side. Yeah, again, the engine doesn't like it. The engine doesn't like it. I mean, nowadays, that's what it is. The modern engines, they don't like anything that has something to do with the space advantage. But in a practical game, it's not, not so really so easy to prove it. Instead of queen c8, instead of queen c8, maybe you can try to play knight a6, should be fine. With the idea, again, to meet knight c3 with either knight e4 and the same idea. You've made a weird knight a6, but you know, actually I remember, I was, um, I was once uh, checking how very good GMs are playing this. Uh, for example, uh, one of the uh, strongest Ukrainian grammasters, um, what was his last name? Yuri Krivoruchko, yeah. He was playing pretty much against everything. The system d5. Pretty much against everything, including rookie one. Yeah, d5. Uh, now, this is the move which I, I sort of wanted to recommend to avoid, but maybe somebody's going to find it to be easier to play. So, where's the idea? White normally takes C takes. E takes. We're fighting for the center. Knight C3. And about this position, very often... Black positions the knight on a6, then pushes either c6 or c5, and reroutes the knight to e6. So I think it really makes sense. It really makes sense actually to consider to start with knight a6, not revealing the cards. You're still considering to play d5, c takes, e takes, possibly push c5, after capturing, capture with the knight. And I reroute it to e4 or maybe e6. So let's say white is gonna play knight c3, and you can still play d5. C takes, e takes, and we reach the same position. But you know, I I'm not sure if I really like this position again. I, I know it's a quite a popular one. So let's say bishop f4 about c5, that's again a eternal question. Can you do that? Because after D takes, if you take with the B pawn, those are hanging pawns. Maybe not immediately on H4, but the idea. Easy, easy targets. So you need to be extremely careful. Uh, you can try to postpone the decision and play something like, yeah, I think knight E4 was quite an interesting move here. Take on c3, play c5, or another alternative is playing c6, reroute the knight to c7, play knight e6, and then look for the right moment to play c5. So let's say what plays something like knight e5, knight c7, e4, and knight e6. Bishop e3. I have a feeling that black always is slightly struggling. So this is why I really don't like the system. I don't really like. <laughs> so that's again the reason why I'm why I'm avoiding this. And I think it's much more interesting to play for some 94 systems, play for maybe closed um hippo systems starting with queen c8. You give up the center but you keep a lot of flexibility and you're still considering to play c5, g6, bishop g7, knight d7. And your opponent needs to understand exactly how to play it out. He has no clear targets. And this is why I really like it over this system. d5, c takes, e takes, knight c3, 4, white. It's very easy. Very easy to pressure these pawns. If you are playing c6, sooner or later your opponent is going to play e4. If you are playing c5, sooner or later your opponent is going to take it on c5. He has easy targets again. So now you know. Now you know why I try to avoid this. But again, it's up to you. 
I want to mention uh, there is an interesting alternative what you can include from the Black's perspective. It used to be quite popular something like uh, four or five years ago. It was Bishop A6. Um, the Bishop A6 idea, unfortunately, <laughs> It comes together with the idea to push d5, which again I don't really like. So that's why that's why essentially I dropped it. So let's say the main line is b3. There's a smart intermezzo check, then retreat, and normally everybody plays d5. As Sergei Karyakin was playing in the uh, uh, which year was it? The Berlin candidates, I, 2000. 16, 17, whatever. I already don't remember the year. Uh, he was playing the exactly the system with great success for one candidate's tournament, the so-called Minister of Defense. And again, the idea is recapture with the 2000. No, 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 not 2018. It was Berlin, uh, where he um, won the candidate's tournament. Maybe. Maybe it was 2015 even. Okay. Anyway, a long, long time ago. And this used to be quite a popular line back then. And black has very active bishop. But anyway, it sooner or later is rerouted back to b7, c6. I think one of the typical ideas here was rook e8, knight e7, knight f8, knight e6. And black is looking for the right moment to play c5. Now this is slightly more interesting. So again, how did that happen? We are attacking the pawn on c4. b3 is not the only move. There's queen c2, there's queen b3, there's queen a4. Queen a4 is not harmless. Queen b3 is interesting. Queen c2 used to be quite popular at the highest level but mainly because of the pawn sacrifice of d5. How you play queen c2? Do you sack the pawn? I think this has a reputation of a relatively harmless line. Of course. <laughs> okay. Takes, takes. What was it here? Bishop b7. Yeah, black needs to be precise. Yeah, black needs to be precise. So Exactly so. Uh, knight e5, uh, short castle, knight c6, rook d1, bishop e7. Um, yeah, I don't remember. Was it queen f5? Was it queen a4? There are two contonations here. Uh, there are two contonations. So I don't know what's the uh, what's the what's the one which is causing uh, the biggest problems. Yeah, against strong uh, against stronger players. This is interesting idea. E4, it was something like this. E5, knight E8, knight C3, knight C7. I already don't remember. I'm showing you from memory. Two thousand eighteen. Are you okay? Maybe maybe I'm mixing up then. You know, no, man, maybe I'm mixing up. I, I thought Karyakin was playing at Berlin. Maybe it wasn't in Berlin. Maybe it was a different candidates tournament. Sorry about that. Maybe I just mixed it up. It was the candidates tournament where Karyakin was um, playing exclusively Queen's Indian. I don't remember. I mean, it, it, it already was in the past. So Maybe in Moscow. Okay. Might be. I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, about this uh, Bishop A6, it's an uh, interesting sideline. I used to play, for example, here after B3, B5 for a moment. But the idea that C takes, Bishop B5, Knight C3, uh, what was it here? Bishop B4, here, and Bishop C6. I used to play all of this. And I came to the conclusion that there is nothing better. There is nothing better than playing the good old bishop b7. But I, I still believe that 
everybody who is playing some Queen's Indian, you have to, you have to test this all. You have to try Bishop A6. You have to try Bishop B7. You have to try various systems. For example, right now, um, right now I'm playing uh, Bishop B7, Bishop G2, and Bishop B4 check. Now this is my pet line currently. Would get great results. And uh, the idea of this line, instead of the bishop e7, yeah, bishop d2, a5. So the idea is that white is not interested to take on b4. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So we take away these squares. Castle, castle. I'm sorry, a5, castle, castle. Now there are two moves, uh, bishop, G, uh, bishop f4 or uh, bishop g5. Uh, bishop f4 is considered to be uh, the more popular continuation. Bishop g5 almost immediately leads to equality uh, with the idea that knight c3 is met by knight e4. There is extremely, extremely little for white. I would even dare to say nothing. And again, everything gets traded. Um, no, how do you... You mean here? Bishop f6? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you can do that. But again, Captain Flag, we reached the position I was mentioning you. The hippo position. The hippo position with a dark square bishop gone for white. So I think this is okay. So let's say something like d6, e4, um, knight e7, queen, I don't know where, g6, bishop g7, Queen e7, prepare either e5 or c5. Okay, maybe not c5, but e5. And again, I mean, white is enjoying some space advantage, but usually struggling how exactly to continue. I mean, hippo is not a good line, but I think this, this makes sense. This makes sense, this hippo setup against various uh, white setups where white is aggressively going for the, for the pawn center. Um... Well, at least I like it. So after bishop g... I'm sorry. Uh, castle, castle. Bishop g5, bishop e7, knight c3, knight e4. Everything gets traded. Everything gets traded. Uh, knight b5 is not dangerous. There's c6. So normally we get something like this. Yeah, white well, cannot do anything. At least from my games, I came to this conclusion. F5, knight e7, knight f6, rook e8, knight e4, e5, you name it. It's so easy. And these pawns, they're actually slowing down white's intentions to fight at the queen side. Because a3 is going to be a4. So white needs to spend another tempo trying to do something. So I just like it. I think it's much more interesting if white is playing bishop f4. Okay, yeah, you check it out. I mean, this bishop b4, it's an interesting sideline. So, bishop f4, about this position, uh, the same applies for bishop g5. Now, there is a one major threat that you should be aware of. Yeah, c5 is threatening. c5 capture the bishop the same applies for bishop g5 you're threatening to lose the bishop so you have to retreat knight c3 knight e4 um again here are a number of lines at wise disposal he played d5 <laughs> he missed c5 okay uh yeah where the things have happened yeah. Uh, so again, the idea is if the trade happens, or let's say queen c2, knight c3. By the way, by the way, one reason why again it's it's a good idea to have a5 included. There is no knight g5 anymore. Any knight g5 ideas should it even happen? And if you miss the bishop on b7, you always have rook a7. So the rook is never get trapped. <laughs> Another bonus. So let's say white plays something like queen c3. 
you already should remember the idea of bishop e4. Yeah, I think it was like this. I hope I'm not mixing it up. And if white ever is trying to get rid of you. Okay, it was like this. I don't remember, just a second. Queen c3. Yeah, I think it was bishop e4. I'm trying to remember. Knight d2. Maybe there was bishop b4. To be honest, I don't remember. Takes, 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 an easy game. Easy game. Knight e7, queen e7, prepare something here. f5, knight f6. Again, um, uh, easy game. Uh, bishop h3, yeah, it might be a possibility. I slightly mentioned this, this idea, that white might remove the bishop from g2 to play knight e2, get rid of your bishop, but white loses a lot of time in the process. So, I don't think this is dangerous. Here, here, I guess again, something like simple retreat, e4, and bishop f6. Yeah, it looks pretty solid. Some e5, some knight c6, some possibilities um, to test this. Uh, I'll, I use this line because it's a rare line. I think it's rather interesting. But the critical line is here. Knight c3, knight e4, knight b5, c6. And you need to know perfectly what happens after knight c7. Knight c7 is supposed to be a draw. There was a forced line. Here. 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 And this is bad. I think so. Or, or was it was it the, was it the equal position? I don't remember to be honest. But the queen is trapped. White gonna do that. Uh, so the critical line was, what was it? C five. Yeah, it was C5. There's some high-level GM games already in this line. Queen C7. Takes an A4. Yeah, this is how they play it. And uh, Queen B4, Knight A6, White suddenly loses. Whoops! <laughs> and you could you could take the take the rook, and the black is just up a piece. So that's a known trick. And uh, after a4, I'm sorry, c5, queen, c7, c takes a4. Takes, 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 takes. Here. Uh, this normally ends with a draw. So white is up a pawn, double pawn. Black is feeling pretty secure. Rook a2, bishop a6 is incoming, extra pawn is sort of irrelevant, ends with a draw. So this is quite an interesting line. So again, bishop b4, a5, bishop f4, knight c3, again, white is threatening with queen c2, so knight e4. And again, there might be number of continuations. Number. I think one of my opponents uh, once he tried a logical knight e2. And he played it very quickly. I took it here. I took it here. And what was I played here? Oh, okay, I, I think I remember. Now, this was quite a funny game. And the best equalizing move here for black. Now, this was insane. This was pretty insane. I I had apparently to play d5 right away. No, 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 d5. And g5. <laughs> I hope I'm not mixing it up. I, I tried it vice versa. Uh, forcing the bishop go to e3. <laughs> no, but the bishop is on e3. Here, 
and there was something very specific about it. I don't remember. Okay, I'm I'm mixing it up. I'm mixing it up. You can check my game. Uh, no Studer against me, Bundesliga. Uh, 2019, 20? I don't remember. Yeah, I got in trouble, but very quickly equalized because he he mixed up, and I had the correct idea, but with the wrong order of the moves. So about this bishop b4 is how do I find moves like g5? Imagination. <laughs> I mean, this bishop of 4 is a very annoying piece, but there was something specific about it. I mean, generally, it's a bad move. I think there was... Ah, wait. I think there was this line. Uh, now I remember. Takes, 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 takes. I think... Wait. How was it? Ah, I think I tried like this. I think I played like this. And he had an amazing resource, h4. Yeah, which I didn't see. So g takes, bishop h6, here, and boom. And suddenly the queen comes into game. Instead of this, the correct move order was d5 first <laughs> and then g5 yeah okay and there was something something very specific okay maybe it wasn't like this then whatever i don't want to show you silly lines but <laughs> there are always exceptions captain flag there are always exceptions all right um yeah so I want to mention one one thing, for example, how white could try to trick you. White might try to avoid you playing, yep, third move g3, or instead of this, knight f3. Knight f3 and g3. Now you can play b6, okay, but the problem with this move you can you cannot play a bishop b4 that's one second you cannot play a bishop b4 check that's two so you're literally forced to play this system with bishop e7 unless you are happy to play c5 yeah i guess c5 is good i guess c5 is good still good because he has no time to push c4 d5 but after bishop e7, your opponent has fooled you. Yeah, Hedgecock, sure. Why not? It's pretty solid. So that's why I think against g3. Uh, c4. Uh, knight of 3, knight of 6, c4. Yeah, about that, I think I already had a boot camp. Um, the double hedgehog system actually about knight of three knight of three knight of six c4 i think the most precise is b6 not e6 that's my opinion start with b6 and the point is g3 bishop g7 bishop g2 you can still switch to the double double uh, Fian Kettle system. It's very interesting. I, I think I did a bootcamp about this. Uh, extremely, extremely interesting lines. And uh, Black is again relying on Bishop G7, Knight E4, etc. 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 I already talked about this, so I'm not going to talk about this again. No, no, no. It's not so simple. Not so simple. It's, it's a lot of uh, dynamic game. I think I did it. If I did not, I'll do a bootcamp about this in the future. Right, uh, so I think after c4, b6 is the trickiest line. Again, b6 works very fine if you are a Queen's Indian player, if you have the same setup against the Ninzo Indian, knight c3, e6, bishop b4, 
and uh, it also gives you a lot of freedom to improvise with the double fianchetto of g6 bishop g7 about the uh, this system so let's say let's start with d4 knight of three and g3 i think i think it always makes sense to punish your opponent for the chosen order of the moves otherwise everybody would be playing like this yeah exactly b5 exactly b5 so that's that's a perfect um, way to try to uh, punish your opponent so let's say your opponent obviously he has queen d3 he has e3 there's many many moves and the big idea here is revealed that suddenly you're very active and you are stopping white from playing c4 it's just a easy game again engine doesn't really like it something like c3 um what was it i think i last time played h6 yeah h6 knight i don't remember already and something like this no i think it was a4 b4 a5 and knight a6 i had a couple of games in this line and very very interesting results so this is what i can recommend h6 is to stop bishop g5 from happening b5 is played to stop y from c from from happening if y doesn't do all of that let's say he does something like b3 uh, bishop b7 shortcut let's say c5 at some moment you can simply take it over so this doesn't doesn't really promise white any advantage so what else is there um d4 yeah g3 obviously g3 about the uh g3 <laughs> this used to be quite an interesting topic for me some years ago at the time i wasn't playing any catalan so i think you can still try to play some sort of a queen's indian with this it starts with what was it bishop b4 check bishop b4 check bishop d2 bishop e7 bishop g2 and shot castle how does what continue i borrowed this idea from richard rapport he is playing this consistently so the idea is revealed that white needs to make a move uh let's say white plays e4 but e4 is gonna meant by d5 okay okay it doesn't mean it's sound but uh, it's interesting it's interesting sure if he can play it at 2700 level why can't you so the idea is e ta c takes e takes e5 knight e4 c5 knight c6 you're playing extremely aggressive against the center um knight c3 would be very tempting but it allows black the pressure the pawn on c4 right away because the knight is already positioned on c3 let's say knight f3 and you just take it and because of this bishop on d2 and the knight on early on c3 it's not so easy for white to recapture this pawn it's not in the catalan spin sure but what do you do what do you do knight f3 right and now you play b6 <laughs> You want to play bishop b7 yeah you sort of wasted the tempo uh short castle okay bishop b7 knight c3 and i think it was knight a6 i think this is how rapport was playing himself and again probably inevitably it leads to d5 this position
Yeah, this is an extra tempo, but not necessarily it is bishop on d2 really is helping for white. So if you're already speaking at quite a scientific level, uh, from the black's perspective, you would be looking for position where bishop d2 doesn't feel like a waste of tempo. That's it. <laughs> and he played it a number of times. So that's an interesting line. But normally, normally, uh, why not 94? Um, yeah, I guess 94 is possible. Yeah, but uh, this 94 feels like a waste of time. Because remember, I was showing you this line and white plays here bishop d2 no 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 this is a waste of tempo white is going for this line and you just wasted the tempo for bishop b4 bishop e7 this already is one of the main lines no this is not good okay so i guess uh, knight a6 playing tricky with d5 black still should be getting a normal position but normally, normally g3 doesn't allow well, black to play Queen's Indian. So that's it. So that's it. And uh, normally you should be playing something else. Uh, I guess d5 uh, followed with Queen's Gambit accepted or declined or some Catalan. No, it's already not Queen's Gambit. It's some Catalan uh, plays something solid. Uh, should should be should be perfectly fine, yeah. But if you really really insist on playing the queen's Indian, there is a way. Yeah. Now this is the way I showed you. So bishop b4, bishop e7, uh, short castle, knight f3. By the way, I didn't I didn't show you knight e5. Is you just play c6, bishop b7, d6, and d5. Let's say here, here, here. I just d5. Some sort of a Catalan again with a very solid position. All right. By the way, I very, very quickly, I think I told you the main ideas. You can ask me if I missed some system, but if you have some interesting ideas, you can play yourself in the Queen's Indian, and you would like to ask a question did you play it correctly what did you do it wrong you can try to send it to my discord channel i think i i had a separate a separate section for that uh, live analysis Yeah, in the uh, live analysis, if you're interested, you can, you can send in your games. Uh, something you have played in the Queen's Inn and something is not clear. Uh, it's a tricky opening. Yeah, maybe for somebody it's going to be easier to play e6, d5, c6, some slav, play in the center. But it has a, has a lot of venom. And I think it works together playing with uh, the Dutch defense yeah it looks very similar to the Dutch defense positions for example let's say uh, let's let's say white doesn't know what's happening here knight of three here 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 I'm gonna place a normal position um, knight c3 knight e4 white is playing something normal f5 b3 bishop f6 here d6 so you're simply looking towards a kingside attack and this is what i like about this position so whatever i mean i don't know rook d1 queen e7 some random moves okay knight h4 takes takes and something like g6 bishop g7 knight f6 knight e4 and start to play active in the center so if you have some games you can send me over for a brief moment, I might wait for it. If not, I'll just do something else. Uh, 
Uh, just a second. All right. If somebody's gonna say I might revisit it, I think I'm gonna play some Blitz now. <laughs> Maybe Queen's Indian, if possible. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dark Dress. Uh, yeah, I think it's about every single opening, it's uh, much better that you understand the ideas. I think it's, it's pretty good to play the normal system you don't have to play this very fancy i'm sorry you don't have to play this very fancy bishop b4 i think bishop b7 is uh, bishop b7 is completely fine but i what i like is the flexibility so you can play queen's indian for you all your life you can play bishop b7 you can play bishop a6 you can play bishop b4 after bishop b4 you can play a5 you can play c5 there's so many interesting ideas so many interesting ways how you can try to surprise your opponent always find something new yeah but i, I guess it it applies uh to every single opening yeah shoot away what question aziz that's why i'm here Change King's Indian. Um, Aziz, can you please specify your question? Not sure if I understand it. Uh, yeah, D5, that's a tricky line. I think I mentioned it, didn't I? It's Pologayevsky's line. D5 takes Knight H4. Uh, it really depends. It depends on the time you have on the clock. If you have not so much time, you're playing accelerated time control game. I guess simplest is 94. Yeah, so 94 here, here, bishop e4, bishop f6, h6, d6, a5, knight a6, knight c5. For a blitz game, just play this. If your opponent plays, plays this. But for a normal game, it, it probably makes sense to pursue the main line with c6. Knight e5, uh, reroute the knight here and play d5. Let's say, what was it again? Already forgot it. Knight f5, knight c7, e4, d5. And I was recommending to recapture with a pawn, not with the knight. But probably take with the knight also as possible. Takes, takes. And you're going to be slightly suffering, but normally... Normally it should end with the draw. Yeah, here here was this idea to just to give up the bishop and play uh, an easy game. Yeah, Alpha Zero crushes everybody. <laughs> Maybe Alpha Zero is just gonna uh, simply demolish Queen Zin and write it off. <laughs> yeah, maybe something like in five years. Uh, get out of the opening fast attack on the weak points from black, Aziz. Uh, the attack is always there, the attack. But I think you need to be patient. Um, if you're talking about the main line here, castle, castle, um, knight c3, I'm not sure I really see... I really see how you are going to immediately attack. But if you're patient, you're executing this idea and you manage to build up everything, build up everything, then potentially you might have... Uh, what do you mean you're not castling? What are you doing then? Uh, you mean some mage pawn push? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how do you want to do that, really. Double fianchettos. Oh, no, that's a, dif that's a different system. Double fianchettos is a different system here. H5? No, I don't see how you're going to start him attack immediately. Because you do need to hide your king somewhere. Uh, or were you suggesting here H5? 
I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question. <laughs> Double fee and Keto is something else. Yeah, H5? Oh, no, I don't think that's good. H5. Uh... Yeah, but with what pieces are you attacking there? No, this is not a good plan. Maybe for some blitz, maybe for some surprise, but not as a general strategy. I'll just ignore it. Knight c3, even if you push it, I can even ignore it. So let's say I'm playing d5. So you managed to open the h file. But what about it? I mean, there's nothing. Your bishop is on b7. Which, which pieces are you going to attack? So you just lost a lot of tempo. Just Let's say you did manage to achieve this. Open the h file. Um, yeah, the queen is closed. So your king is... I mean, you're completely underdeveloped. It's not a good idea. But I think you need to be patient. If you want to play an attacking game, don't play Queen's Indian. It's very simple. So if you're looking for a sharp line, don't play the Petrov. <laughs> right? If you're looking for a very dynamic game, don't play the Italian game. So you have to play something which really uh, gives you more chances to complicate the game. So after D4, you're looking for a sharp game. King's Indian, yeah, King's Indian, that's that's completely something else, so you play King's Indian, uh, you can play the Grunfeld, uh, play something more aggressive, uh, Queen's Indian is not going to do it, uh, Queen's Indian is for the positional players, uh, play it patiently, uh, try to um, just develop normally pieces and slightly unorthodox positions, but... I don't think I'm ready to talk about King's Indian because I don't feel I'm an expert there. I have some ideas, obviously, yeah. And then you play short castle, e5, etc. I mean, this, this is big theory. But that's, that's what the most aggressive players in history they're playing. I mean, Gary Kasparov used to play this. And from modern chess, who is still playing this? Um, Timura Jabov is still playing. Hikaru Nakamura used to play it. The King's Gambit. So why don't you try this? Uh, the Grunfeld has more like a reputation of a drone, in, uh, dr drone opening. So this is the Grunfeld. Extremely dynamic, extremely interesting. If you're interested uh, to learn something, check MVL's games. Risk-free is good for your heart. 